So this first video is all about planning a watercolour so that you can keep a lovely broad range of colour and particularly tone because it's tone that really stands out when you're showing your paintings. So if you'd like to have a little bit of a closer look I'm going to show you how I would plan a painting. So this one's going to be a simple motif. It's um, also included in um, the new book that I've got out called Capturing Light. There are a few examples of this um, type of theme. It's going to be a moonlit theme. So I'll show you using a very basic moonlit motif as how I would plan a painting to make sure I capture the white. So let's do a tonal plan. I've decided already that it's going to be vertical or portrait shaped rather than the more relaxed and slightly broader based landscape shape. So I've turned my page. I'm going to show you the plan using a felt tip just so it shows up. But in a minute, I would transfer that plan onto my watercolour artboard, which is the firm sort of stiff watercolour surface that I tend to favour. So I'll use pencil to do the plan onto that. But so you can see, let's have a little look at the um, structure of how I tend to um, plan my paintings. So after I've chosen the portrait shape, what I'll next do is the next largest item, which would be a typically a horizon line. So the top half of this painting is going to be sky or moonlit sky, night sky, and the bottom half will be uh, the land. So there's going to be a definite tonal difference between the top half and the bottom half. So already we know that one part of the painting is going to be lighter or darker than the other. After that, I'm going to place my moon. The moon is the subject. Very hard to draw a circle freehand doesn't matter because remember we'll be using pencil in a minute and we can adjust this. Next I'm actually going to put more detail into these two features. So my landscape's rather dull at the moment, why don't I put in a secondary horizon which is going to be a, maybe a distant hillside and then maybe the water, the pool of beneath can reflect the moon so we're going to have a lit area here so already I'm playing with my plan I just decided that the land was going to be darker but now I need to know that I'm going to leave some light so the moon can reflect into the pool so what I tend to do is put W's for white wherever I'm going to keep my painting clear from paint and keeping it dry and then I'll be able to paint with confidence all around this area using a technique which I call gravity painting. So you'll notice maybe that the um, slope of this board is inclined so that the paint is going to run down the page and it's going to be carried within water that I'm going to spread on this board. So now I've got that plan, I just wanted to mention, obviously there's many different um, ways of doing this. So um, say this subject is a sun on the, uh, again on a horizon, you would actually obviously be dropping that uh, planned white area lower down to the horizon and lifting that horizon up. It actually clips through all the vegetation at the top there. Or maybe there's a bit of light in the middle of a motif. So here we've got more light right in the centre. So you can imagine how you can alter this idea for different um, types of paintings. And then when you get to something a bit more complex, you can even have a horizon line that cuts the white. So here we've actually, I've actually painted in um, waves by placing the horizon in on either side of them. <laughs> 